you need to be able to understand how to draw and use distance time graphs. So we need to, with everything in physics, have our units for distance and for time properly set in our mind before we start. So for distance, we are talking in metres and time, we are talking in seconds. Occasionally you might get a question where the distance is in kilometres, the time is in hours and they ask you for the answer in kilometres per hour. This is perfectly fine to stick with kilometres an hour in this circumstance. However, in some circumstances you are going to be expected to convert hours into seconds or minutes into seconds and kilometres into metres. If um, it doesn't say give your answer in kilometres per hour or in miles per hour or in any other non-standard unit, convert it into standard units which for time is seconds and for distance is um, metres. So to go from hours into seconds we first have to go into minutes and then we have to go into seconds. So one hour, we need to times that by 60, which equals 60 minutes. To go into seconds, we need to times that by 60 again. So one hour is going to equal 3,600 seconds. Now, I think it is unlikely they would ask you to convert hours into seconds. They might give you um, something that is five minutes not tell you you need to convert it into seconds, but you need to be able to convert that into seconds yourself. So again, it is just times 60, so that would be 300 seconds. Converting from kilometres into metres is much easier. You just need to times that by a 1,000. So one kilometre is a 1,000 metres. 0.5 kilometres is 500 metres. This is what our distance time graph is going to look like. We're going to have distance going on the side with our distance in metres, time going along the bottom in seconds. And you need to be able to recognise um, the lines in the graph and see what they're doing. So here we are going at a steady speed. We are increasing one metre every one second that we go. So if it's increasing um, proportionally, it is going at a steady speed. In this graph here, something slightly different is happening. We are going up and then we are going across. So the going up bit is a steady speed. And then the going across bit, if we notice, time is going on, but distance is always four. So on a distance time graph, when it is going across, it is stationary. bit more complicated now. This bit here we know from the previous slide time is increasing but distance isn't increasing so over here we are stationary. But here this curve does not mean we're going at a steady speed, it means we are accelerating. This is a tricky one for GCSE accelerating. Now this is the opposite of accelerating. Again we have that curve but we are going in a negative direction so this is decelerating. And then when we get to this bit here Time is increasing, but distance isn't increasing, so here we are stationary. This one again, the first bit, 
steadily increasing. We are going at a steady speed. The middle bit we are stationary. And then for the last bit we are decelerating. And it is this type of graph you are going to be expected to do some maths on. We know speed equals distance over time. For your graph, we need to make it a touch more sophisticated and say that speed equals the final distance minus the initial distance divided by the final time minus the initial time. Now, I'm going to be really, really uh, picky about this. In your exam, in your homework, I want you to lay it out in exactly this format. The reason I want you to lay it out in this format is because it's a l easier for you to see if you've made a mistake and then correct it. And if you can't see the mistake and correct it, it's easier for the examiner to work out where you've gone wrong and then potentially carry your error forward. That is a thing we're allowed to do and then give you the marks later on. So always lay your work out as clearly as possible. So this is the graph again that I just showed you. And what I'm going to do is to divide this up into three sections. I'm going to call this section A. I'm going to call this section this section B. And I'm going to call this section C. And then for each section, we are going to work out the speed. So the speed for section A. The final distance, if we go across here, is 5. The initial distance, we started down here, that is 0, divided by the final time, that is 3 and a half. I know it doesn't look like 3 and a half, but this is just a rough graph, minus 0. I know putting the minus 0 in there seems annoying and pointless, but I really would like you to get into the habit of doing everything um, neatly and properly so then when we come into the exam we are doing everything perfectly when we do that in the calculator it's going to be 1.4 and that is going to be meters per second so for section B if I just pop that on there for you again our final distance if we go across is 5. Our initial distance is also 5. We can see, because we haven't moved any our final and initial distance are the same thing, we can then divide that by the final time, which is 8, minus the initial time, which is 3.5. If we just look at that, that is going to give us 0 divided by 4.5. Now, 0 divided by anything is going to be 0. So that is 0 metres per second, which fits in with what we said earlier, that if we have a straight line on the graph, things are stationary. So for the last bit here, we're going to be looking at C. So final distance. Final distance over here is 0. The initial distance here is 5 divided by the final time, which is 10, minus the initial time, which is 8. So then we have minus 5 divided by 2, and that is going to give us minus 2.5 meters per second. It's really important that you know the difference between velocity time graphs and distance time graphs. These were distance time graphs but it's important that you can use both. Thanks for watching, I really hope this is helpful. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos. Share to help your friends get better grades. Any comments, corrections, questions or requests down below please.